In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Gospel for last night, the Easter Vigil, we heard these words. There is no need for alarm. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. But he has risen. Very simple statement. There is no need for alarm. All the chaos that's going on around you at the moment, there is no need for alarm. All the horrors of being occupied by the Roman authorities, there is no need for alarm. All the terror that you saw at Golgotha on Good Friday, there is no need for alarm. Yes, the Lord has died, but there is no need for alarm. Because the Lord has risen from the dead. So there is a reassurance. And a very short word for reassurance is hope. Hope. But the key phrase in that short but significant sentence is this. You are still looking for Jesus. See, one of the problems is when we're in the dark, we get lost. When we're in the dark of depression or fear, anxiety, anger, illness, financial problems, we stop looking because it's very dark. And when it is dark, we are afraid to move. So we just stand still. We know that if we move in the dark, we might fall over. On Christmas Eve, the reading from Isaiah says, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. That's the beginning of the story. It's the beginning of the promise That no matter what the darkness, the light will overcome. And so, how do we move from the darkness to the light? We have to keep still looking for Jesus. We don't just accept that this is the darkness, this is the horrible, this is the pandemic, this is the misery, this is my problem, this is my sickness, and that's the way it is. That's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is that these things happen to us. Yes, there is darkness in our world and it's foolish to ignore it. But if the darkness overwhelms us, if the darkness becomes who we are, then it is dark indeed. It is dark indeed. And so the Lord says to us, The words say to us, are you looking for Jesus? Or are you content with the darkness? Do you accept it's dark, there's nothing I can do about it? Well, the consequences of that way of living is further darkness. It's further problems. The dark gets darker. One of my favourite sayings is this. Better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. Better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. Well, there's the candle. In normal Easter's, we would carry this into the church And as the candle, the single candle, comes into the church, all the people there light their candle from this candle. And slowly, from the darkness, with just one light, the church begins to grow lighter. People begin 
to see what they couldn't see. To understand that which they didn't understand. To find hope where all they saw was darkness. And this candle helps us to be reminded of that saying. Better to light one candle, better to do one act of kindness and goodness than to moan about everybody else. We can all moan and bellyache till the cows come home. We can all complain and say, isn't it awful? Our country, our family, our school, our parish, our neighbourhood, our borough is going to hell in a handcart. Well, it will be if we're the ones pushing the handcart. We will be the ones who are taking it in that direction. Or we light a candle. We become the candle. We become the light that despite the darkness, the light still shines. The light never goes out. When we were baptised at the font, when our parents brought us to the font, the candle was lit. And it's there to guide us through life. It's the guidance, it's the light, it's the truth. It's the answer to the human question. And the darker it gets, the more we need to look at the light. And so on this Easter Sunday, we ask ourselves, are we looking for Jesus in our lives? Are we looking in that direction? Or are we overwhelmed by the darkness? Let us pray that the light of Christ, which has guided us thus far, in these difficult times that the world faces at the moment, that this will be our hope, this will be our truth, this will be our promise. And there is great cause for hope. Because when we look back to the past, when we look back to our grandparents and our great-grandparents, and we look back to generations, we see the horrors of what many of them had to live through. The reason you're sitting in a new church is because the old one was so badly damaged because of the bombs that rained upon this community that it almost fell down. The people lived through the horrors of the war and the First World War and the Napoleonic War and the Hundred Years' War and it just goes back and on. But what kept them consistent what is it that still is here today? The light of that candle. What still gives hope and helps us to understand how to be truly human? It's the light of that candle. It's the message of that candle that leads us to the altar, to the promise, I am with you always. It's the light of that candle that never goes out, that leads us to this promise that says, I am with you always. This is my body and I give it to you. I give it to you. Freely. Doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, how old, what you look like, how good you've been, how bad you've been, the promise is the same for us all. That's the joy of Easter, that the darkness can't win. So light a candle. And stop cursing the darkness. Be the light in your life that's there in the darkness of other people's lives. And bring that light to them by your kindness, your generosity, your greatness of heart. By your witness to the gospel, by the way you live your life. By the sort of neighbour you are, the sort of husband, wife, the sort of friend, the sort of person you work with. By the way you build this community, which is your community, it belongs to you because you are here. This is the light. 
and no darkness will ever extinguish that light. The Lord has risen from the dead. We rejoice so that we may continue to look for the light of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.